Now, what does this thing mean? We know what the gradient function tells us. It tells us when this thing's positive, I'm going up. When it's zero, I get stationary points. When it's negative, I'm going down. But what does this tell us? What's going on? Okay. So we'll come to language in a second. Uh, let's first think about, like with stationary points, we were looking for when the derivative is zero. Well, when is this thing zero? When, when, what value of x makes this zero? And the answer is x equals zero makes the second derivative zero. Well, where is that? Have a look. Where is it? It's, um, it's this spot here. See that? At that spot there, I'd love you to add this on, maybe in another color if you've got it. At that spot right there, the second derivative is zero. Okay. Now, what's special about that, that, about that spot? Well, we don't know yet. I need to tease on this a little more. Okay. You remember I mentioned to you before, when you're determining the nature of a stationary point, you'll know whether it's a maximum or a minimum depending on what's happening in the neighborhood, what's happening on either side. Okay. So therefore, I'm interested on, in what happens on either side of this spot. Okay. What happens, for instance, to the right-hand side? When I put in positive values of x, what is the sign of the second derivative? It's also positive. 6 times any, any positive number, also positive. So on this side over here, when x is positive, my second derivative is positive. Okay. What about over here on the left? What about when x is negative? When x is less than 0, 6 times x is also less than 0. Does that make sense? So over here, my second derivative is negative. Okay? Now what does that correspond to? Look carefully at the graph. Sorry I keep on using so many colors, but you know how I am with colors. What's being described is, do you see over on this right hand side, I want you to imagine it, it's a bit like a, it's kind of like a valley, isn't it? Right? Every part here is facing upwards. Like that, right? Whereas on the other side, this part of the graph, if you have a look at the curvature of it, it's facing downwards. Like so, okay? In particular, have a look at this spot in between the, um, in between the turning points, okay? Do you see that the gradient is negative? That's why it's going from top to bottom. But it's going negative in different ways. <clears throat> Here's a function. It's, going, it's got a decreasing gradient. It's going from top to bottom. Okay? Now, this function here is still going down. It's still decreasing, right? But is it getting faster or is it getting slower? Up here, up at my right hand over here, it's closer to a stationary point. It's slow up there because stationary means it's not moving at all. But then it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. It's speeding up, isn't it? Okay, as it drops off. Now, this is still decreasing. This is also still decreasing. You start high and then you go low. Does that make sense? But is it speeding up or slowing down? It's slowing down, isn't it? Down here, if I could bend it far enough, it would become a stationary point. See, there it is. Okay. So in between here and here, while the gradient is still negative, it's still going down. Okay. It's going down in different ways. And that's what this thing is telling us. Okay, our name for this feature, you can make your heading now, is concavity. Concavity is a word that we use, we associate with lenses, right? Like a, um, like a camera lens, we would say it's convex or it's concave, right? So you can see if you picture this is a side of a lens, right? We would say that this part here, I need my colors again, this part on the left hand side is concave down. If you have an exceptional memory, you might recall back when we were talking about parabolas. You remember we did locus of the parabola? And we were like, you can make parabolas face up, down, left, right. I used this language. I said a parabola can be concave down. Or, as over here, I could say it's concave up. Okay. So, what this means is, the sign of the first derivative tells you increasing, decreasing. But the sign of the second derivative tells you concave down or concave up. OK? 
Okay, so that's so important. Such a big idea. I want to write that down. Okay, um, the sine of the first derivative dy on dx. Right. What it tells you is positive means increasing, and negative means decreasing. Okay. But when you go to the second derivative, if you differentiate again the sine of the second derivative, d squared y on dx squared, based on positive or negative, positive means this guy, concave, up, facing upwards. Think of like a cup. This cup can hold water because it's facing upwards. Okay? So this is concave up. Whereas on this side, if you think of the cup, all the water is coming out, the cup's facing down. Concave down if you have whoops, a negative second derivative. Okay. So, how do we use this? Why do we care about this? Well, number one, it helps you understand the picture a lot better, but it turns out to also help us back over here. Let me rub this off. We now know what the second derivative is, right? So, therefore, we can say, hey, you know these stationary points, like say when x equals negative 1. When you put in x equals negative 1 into the second derivative, what do you get? Like, what's the actual value? Well, oh, uh, yes, 6 times negative 1, that gives you negative 6. Okay? But wait, 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 wait. The sign of the second derivative, if it's negative, that means you're concave down. Concave down, you're facing downwards. So that tells you, in one hit, rather than going to the left, going to the right, that tells you, oh, that's a maximum. Do you see that? You see how that's concave down? Likewise, if I said x equals 1, let's put that into the second derivative, what value do you get? 6, which is positive. So that's facing up, it's concave up. So what kind of turning point do you have? Well, it's a minimum. Okay? So this is really useful, right? It's not just to work out what things look like, how they're behaving, but it also helps us do what we were doing before faster and more efficiently. Okay? So. It's a weird idea with lots of notation. By the way, whenever you see something with lots of notation, that's a big ticket for you to know, oh, this is important. Lots of people care about this. Engineers care about it. Physicists care about it. Economists care about it. And every single group will come up with their own notation that they like. So when you see one idea, uh, one idea, and every, there's a million ways to say it, that means it's useful in a lot of contexts. We really care about the first and second derivative. Okay.